Welcome everyone to the third edition of the Mainly Football Podcast and I'm joined here once again by Joe Cran, uh, journalist of the century. This man has gets every story <laughs> under the sun, um, currently doing great things at Sheffield Wednesday. His team are hovering just outside the playoffs in League One, a uh, couple of games in hand, hoping to sneak up into those playoffs where Joe's heart will really jump through the roof. So let's hope uh, the end of the season is good for Joe. But we have a very, very special guest with us today, a former teammate of mine, a player who not only lit up the pitch, the, lit up the dressing room as well. His smile, his personality, his character, everyone loved him. A star of the recent AFCON where he scored absolutely the goal of the tournament. Uh, he was influential in everything his team did as an underdog against some of the big nations in Africa. Uh, so everyone, I'm delighted, delighted to welcome Yusuf and Jungama to the Mainly Football Podcast. Yusuf, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome, Tell me, have you, have you calmed down a bit since the AFCON? Are you, are you, uh, have you relaxed? Because, wow, what a tournament. Yes, yes. Now uh, I'm good, back with the club, and it's uh, another competition. So I have to be focused. So now it's behind me. The memories are still here, you know. The me absolutely. And what incredible memories you made. Yeah. There were so many talking points around Comoros. Um, from the group stages into the knockout stages. Incredible, incredible tournament. So tell us how it was for you. I mean, it was your first ever AFCON. Um, it must have been amazing to be representing your country on, on, on the big scale in Africa. At first, it was a little bit uh, strange because uh, of the rules of um, the COVID. So, it yeah. was uh, one by room, so we, we, we didn't share a lot of things. But uh, after the second game against Morocco, when we, we went out to um, Garoua, another town, so it's been, uh, it's been, uh, it's, uh, it's been uh, different different uh, mood different vibes because it was uh, maybe the last game of the competition so we kick on it and uh, after we beat the Ghana and uh, everything was uh, just uh, unbelievable after I this want, want... sorry man i want to ask how, how was it for for you knowing that you know you had this sort of expectations of a country on your back that had never been to an AFCON before, was there an expectation to do well, or was there an element of "Wow, we've got so we've done so well to get here, and we just want to enjoy ourselves"? I suppose. To 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 be fair, all people, we all team, we're not like uh, we have a lot of pressure. We like we 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 are happy to be to be at the, at the AFCON, and that's it. We didn't think about uh, the population. The, the country, we just hear and play, you know, it's how Co Comor pe Comoros people are, simple, simple and no pressure because we are Muslim and when, uh, when you, are, you are Muslim, you, you don't have the, this pressure, it's just life, you live your life and uh, after you, you see what's happened. It's a nice mentality. Uh, and you could see that in, in how you play together. Are you a very close team when you come together as a national team? Are you very close? From the outside, it looks like there's a lot of team spirit. I know you touched on the difficulties with COVID and not being able to share like you normally would. But when you come together as a national team, are you very close? Do you know the guys for a long time? Is it a team that's developed over the years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's when we, we, we go to the national team, it's something very, very special. I have I never feel this in clubs or something like this because it's special. Uh, we we know each other since a long time. We work with the manager, uh, with the coach since uh, maybe about eight years. And uh, you know, commerce people, a lot of commerce people uh, came from Marseille, so we you you can you can know. Uh, a man from uh, from uh, from like uh, ten or seven years uh, or twenty years, but like this, it's been uh, friends. 
so about Th that was that's why it's uh, ama amazing because like you you grew up with people and after you play with him in national team it's it's crazy it's crazy were, were you a little bit sad that obviously your I know your your brother plays professional football as well um were you a little bit sad that he wasn't able to be there with you who your brother yeah 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 he was with me but but he didn't play you know we we start this um this uh adventure together in uh, 2010 and uh, uh i would like to 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 share like um, maybe one minute with him on the pitch but uh, it didn't happen it's okay we were there and we share a lot of good 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 memories so it's okay it's good I'm sure he I'm sure he has great pride in in watching you and and what you did for for your country on on the big stage. Yeah yeah he's he was very proud also on the the last game against Cameroon he has covid so he 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 wasn't here so what a little bit sad but after after the game we played he, he was very happy and and so are so many people i mean the the response and the reception and the people watching they absolutely loved you and and your team um i was messaging messaging you throughout the tournament and uh, the feedback i was getting from the guys that from paul dickoff our old manager at oldham from james tarkowski from robbie simpson from matt smith all these former teammates and it just shows what a great character you are how much these boys loved you and they were watching you uh, and they were so proud. They loved seeing you um, playing so well. And of course, let's just talk about it. That game against Cameroon, because wow, what a talking point. First of all, no goalkeeper. When did you when did you realize that that was going to be the case? You know, uh, this game was amazing. Do you know, really like we can't we can't uh, forget this game because that the game of the tournament for us that's why we have all these memories maybe without these games we 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 will not have a, a lot of memories but these games uh, uh made us enter in the history you know history of football play the entire game with a, a player on goalkeeper it's like never the games bro it's not like this normally so that's why he, his, his was sick. To be fair, it was a sick game. It was yeah. a very, very, very good game to play. I enjoyed this game a lot. What What did you say to your goalkeeper beforehand? You know, obviously he's a, he's a left back, right? So before the game starts, are you saying to him just you know do do what you can, or are you gonna are you trying to like amp him up? Man, he's so funny, and he's so simple, and he's. Like when he plays left back, he's he he never had the pressure because uh, he's good with his feet, with the ball, he's easy, good technique. So, and uh, we are very close, me and him, and we we eat together uh, with the at uh, the dinner every time. So, I told him, hey, don't play like a keeper. You play like uh, another player when we need. To, to be uh, uh, to be free at the back don't let the midfield come between the two defenders you have to be the third and that's what happened <laughs> you know and was crazy because when we have the ball we we, we know we can we can play easily and uh, we have a good movement good passes we are very sharp and quick in the little space so so it's happened like we did the the <laughs> the day before well like we say the day before you know yeah it's amazing how you've managed to turn it into a positive because so many teams will panic but what can you do that's a situation that that you were that you were given it's very very unfortunate but what an incredible performance and let's just go one game back because to beat ghana one of the favorites for the tournament tell me how you feel because i know how i felt i used to love when i was playing for the national team love coming up against the stars love coming up against the players who play in la liga in the premier league the big the real big stars so tell me how you felt coming up against uh the au brothers um thomas Partey, 
these big, big players in, in world football. Did you enjoy the challenge? How did you feel? Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed the challenge for sure. But first of all, I know there were the Ayu brothers because we grew up together in the Olympique de Marseille. We, we went to uh, at the same school. So I know Jordan and I, I know Andre. You know, it's, it's different for me this game. So, so after a bit the Ghana, we know he, they won maybe five, four or five uh, African Cup, four, I think. So it's a, a great performance. But after the game, in the dressing room, we were sad because we conceded goals. They were 10 and we were like, imagine we don't, uh, we're, not we're not qualified because of these mistakes on the set piece, you know? Or was it like uh, we were happy, oh, we beat Ghana. Everybody in the dressing room like, like, like this. But after, <laughs> after maybe 10 minutes, after maybe 10 minutes, we talk together and we say, we have a chance. We have a chance to, to be qualified. So head up and uh, we need to, to know we, we make a great achievement to beat Ghana. It's Ghana, guys. It's Ghana, so it's not nothing. They are uh, disqualified. I mean, that's a, that's a major, it's a major mentality that to, to get a result against Ghana and beat a team like Ghana and you guys are still like, oh, well, we shouldn't have made those mistakes. Like for a team, for a team that's just qualified for the first time, that is, that's like an elite mentality. Yeah, because we, um, at first, before the tournament, uh, our focus was to, 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 to pass the, the first round, you know, but uh, really, we're not like uh, we want to give points to our opponents, Morocco, Gabon, and Ghana. It's a huge team in Africa. But we're like, look, we have nothing to lose. And uh, we have to, to eat, to eat uh, these people and uh, have the great mentality to, to win games and go to the next round. Because we know third team uh, can, can go to the next round. So, so. It's happened, and we, we are very, very, very happy. So I remember texting you <clears throat> after that game, and of course, you had to wait for maybe 24 hours to see if results went in your favour. How was that 24 hours? I know myself, because when I went to Egypt, we had the same. We finished third, and we had to wait another results. How was that wait for you? Did you watch the games that, that, that meant you could qualify, or did you just kind of turn off everything? What did you do as a team in those 24 hours? Well, like I said before, we are Muslim, so we know we knows God can do everything. So our mentality was, eh, we will be qualified. We will be qualified for sure. But we have to wait with pressure, you know. <laughs> this pressure <laughs> was, it's not, it wasn't uh, uh, 24 hours, it was 48 hours. <laughs> well, that's a long time to wait. <laughs> So the first day, we went to we went to to the stadium. We played the, against Ghana to see game against um, between uh, Guinea-Bissau and uh, Nigeria. Nigeria won this game. Egypt won this game. So everything was for us. So at this time we were qualified. But the next day, the game uh, of Algeria and. Uh, and um, Sierra Leone against uh, Guinea Equatorial. That was the game we had the pressure. And uh, after when this game, um, at the end of the, uh, those games, we were so happy. I can't explain the feeling. It was a, a, a huge feeling. It was amazing. You know, we were in front of the TV and, uh, and uh, jumping, thing like this, you know. <laughs> was amazing. was amazing. It's, it's brilliant. And that's what tournament football is about. <clears throat> it's you, you, you spend a lot of time with your team. You're in the hotel 24 hours a day. You go to training, you come back, you're around the team, you have dinner, you have lunch, you sit to, with each other. And then something special like that happens and you celebrate together. So it's, it's, I, I know the feeling. It's a wonderful moment. I've seen the video of you boys celebrating. It's, it's incredible. And you know, uh, uh, 
I saw about you when we lost the second game against Morocco. I saw about you because I knew uh, you you passed you passed the the first one in the last uh, African Cup of Nation with three points. And uh, uh, I do, I don't know how do you say in English uh, goals. You you score maybe one or two goals. I was scored, and, yes. And you were less. Yeah, one less, one goal less. Minus one. Yeah, yeah. Yes, goal difference. Yes, yeah, so that's the thing. That's what I was saying to you when we were messaging that there's hope, there's a chance because yeah, you yeah. have the points. You're in, you're in the mix. That's what it. That's what it was all about. Uh, and then, I mean, incredible. You get through and you draw the hosts. Well, I mean, tell us a little bit about the atmosphere, the build up. Um, I, I know there was some some issues getting to the stadium. Um, tell us a little bit about the game and, and the atmosphere and, and everything surrounding it. Well, when I think about this, about this it, it was amazing, you know. So at first, <laughs> we went in the in the bus without the goalkeeper, bro. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was like uh, seriously. It's, uh, it's uh, we will play against Cameroon without goalkeeper. Come on, and we were waiting until the the the, the game. Like we we, we thought, uh, come on, they will give uh, they will give us our goalkeeper back, you know. <laughs> but didn't happen, you know. So, so were you were you literally waiting, just hoping that they were going to turn around and say your goalkeeper can play? Until uh, the start of the the Roma, the Roma. Like this, and the goalkeeper, the substitute goalkeeper, Shakir Aladjur, said, Come on, he can play, he can play. Oh, what I'm doing, what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, this moment, but on the in the bus, we 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 looked, we looked at each other and we say, Hey, Shakir, you are the goalkeeper, you know this. <laughs> oh my god no 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 come on come on he started to call his mom uh his brothers you know and he said eh, i will be the goalkeeper today <laughs> and we we make arrangement uh with him to join us in the room because um he he didn't want to be on the on the goal during the room up uh around the uh, front of uh, a lot of people like this, you know, you, you play the host and you, you are a player playing on goalkeeper and you make the warm up on the goal. No, he say, no, 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 no. I join you uh, on the warm up with the start 11, you know. So, you know, you had no goalkeeper warming up for that game. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> goal, you know, after the, the warm up, when you you shoot on the your goalkeeper the 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 substitute goalkeeper we shoot against the goalkeeper coach come on, <laughs> come on. you know i'm just listening i'm just listening to you and if you had just played the game like normal with a goalkeeper you would have some memories and maybe you lost because you're playing one of the big nations in africa and you lost and you played well and, and you don't talk about it that much. But it's stories like this that you're going to, in 20 years time, in 30 years time, when you see one of your teammates, these are the stories. That, and this is the joy of football. It's, it's in adversity, in a difficult time. What a story. And, and uh, to see how you managed it, how you cope with it and the fact that you put in such an unbelievable showing. And he played well in goal. He made some big saves. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> These are the stories. This is what football gives us. This is why people all around the world love football. Uh, definitely. Uh, me, like, when, when everything happened after the game, when I realized, I was like, eh, it's good. It's good that happened like this. Because, you know, before the game, to be fair, we were, like, confident. Come on. In the... You know, in the corridor, when we see Cameroon, uh, Cameroonese players, me, it's not uh, their fault what's happened. 
they players they want to play games you know they want to reach the final and won the cup at home that's the first the, the only thing for them but i think me uh, i i was the, the the one who who were without goalkeeper but for them i think this game uh, was hard you know because you play against a team without goalkeeper how can you be in your mind and me in corridor say hey come on hey, we can't do it today yeah we can't do it <laughs> yeah we are confident we we just need god today we know it yeah? we are like this i know in their mind we were like come on now we can't do this to uh, uh, we have to win you know that, I, I, I think you're right. There, there, was, there was a lot of pressure on Cameroon, wasn't there? Because of the circumstances, there was a lot of pressure on Cameroon to get the result because they got the top score in the tournament with, with Abubakar and you haven't got a goalkeeper and everyone's going, this could get a little bit messy now. Because if, if before the game we were like scared, they will feel it and say, OK, we do, we do our job. We give, a, we give them 10 and after we make excuses, oh sorry, you know, like this. But no, us, we we we're not like this. We seriously confident to win the game. <laughs> like serious, like <laughs> it was no joke. Eh? It was like, eh, we can win today. That's why we made this performance because we trust really we can win this game. After we know it's hard. You have, you don't have goalkeeper after six minutes. You, you got a red card, you know, the, the red card is the red card. You can't say it's not a red card, it was dangerous, even wasn't on purpose. But uh, okay, it's, it's the rules, you know, but us, we were like, uh, like angry because we were like, oh, well, everything is against us. No, that's why we were angry against the referee and things like this, you know, but it's football. After this, in the in the in the pitch, when we got the red card, was football. You know, during the competition, we saw a red card like this just the day before with the I I can't remember the, his name. With the world, mate. Yes, yes, was the close to be the same. So it was red, but us we we lost we lost the, our head because we were like, come on, everything it's against us. Okay, we will. We don't want to play anymore. We want to, to be out of the the stadium. But after when we 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 saw the goalkeeper, he said, Hey, come on, we finished this game. We finished this game, so we finished the game. And uh, it's a good good end because uh, because uh, the football and the the, uh, the fans and uh, everybody around football uh, will remember this game. That's the point. And I've got to ask you, that free kick, I think because obviously you're you're not a sort of, I suppose, a household name, there's not videos of you online all the time. Some people have seen that free kick and gone, wow, that was a great free kick. But that's that's no fluke for you, is it? Like, you don't score too many goals, but when you score them, they're, they're usually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I'm working on this free kick uh, every day. Every day, you know, Dino knows me uh, after the training. Even when I played with him, uh, I, 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 I improve my free kick every time. I scored in all them free kick just in reserves, yes. in reserves, not in, uh, in professional. And uh, I saw uh, free kicks like this. Uh, and uh, during the, the, the qualification, I scored against Kenya. Kenya. I scored... Uh, during the friendly games, also in September, so so I I I had the this confidence to to score free kick, but even during the group the group stage, I had maybe three three free kicks. I saw my guy say, okay, to the, to today today I leave you the first free kicks. I take the third because the two two player can kick a, can uh, shoot the free kick before me. They they have won at maybe two, about two minutes. After 20 minutes, another one, Ben Fardu, has won on the wall. And after, it was my time because I said, okay, I, I took every freaking uh, 
during the group stage. So take take some because we are brothers, you know. Why like this? Because maybe uh, they will score, so we will we will be happy. But after when it was my turn, I scored this one, you know. Because did, did you know? Share, did, my, my my brothers, I scored this one, you know. Did you know as soon as it left your foot that it was going in? Yes, when when uh, I left my foot, I see the the ball. I knew because it was quick, you know. It's about uh, two seconds. When I saw the ball going, I said, "Okay." I was just waiting to 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 see the the the, the goal moving, and after I run. <laughs> so, what I'm going to say to all our guests, to anyone who's watching, to all the visitors on on the show, please YouTube Yusuf and Changama because you will see beautiful goals. I was doing it. I've done it in the tournament. Assist, goals, all action. You see such a good player and people people maybe don't know that. Um, but stepping up to that free kick, I knew exactly what was coming. I knew, I, I know how good your strike is. I, you strike the ball unbelievably well. Um, and there's some amazing footage of you on, on YouTube just scoring goals like that. All, it seems like all the time. Uh, so it's a very, it's a very... I, my only, I'm only upset that you never taught me how to take how to take a free kick like this. <laughs> because when when you left you left at the African of African Cup of Nation, I was uh, after I was injured like uh, maybe a few days before, and after we didn't see each other until uh, until uh, I saw you in the hotel preparing the uh, Afcon. Yeah, so a very nice uh, story for our viewers. When, when I was preparing for the Egypt African Cup of Nations, um, in, we went to Dubai for some warm weather training and Yusuf was there with his family and we stayed in the same hotel. So we had a very nice moment there and all we said to each other is we hope we go to the AFCON together. So the next AFCON, I was hoping South Africa, Comoros, we'd maybe be in the same group. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately we didn't quite make it. But Bafana well, let us down there, didn't we? I know. Bafana, Bafana definitely let us down, but to see you there was was very special. Thank you. So let's let's talk a little bit about the feeling back home because the the people must have been so happy. And I know you haven't been back, but you're going back soon for is it friendlies or qualifiers? Friendly, friendly, friendly. So I'm sure you're going back to a, a hero's welcome. Yeah, I think I think because. Uh, one goalkeeper, the goalkeeper who, who uh, who's been uh, the match of, the man of the match against uh, Morocco, after being injured against Ghana, he went to to, to the country and pff, he has an amazing amazing welcome back, you know, and uh, I think uh, it will be the same for us for the entire team. So we are just waiting now. We are focused on uh, clubs. And when the time will uh, will happen, so we will appreciate this and uh, and uh, appreciate the moment. You deserve it. You deserve the, the big heroes welcome. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit away from away from Afcon, away from uh, your country. I remember our time very very well. In fact, I was. Um, I was YouTubing today to see some of your highlights when you were at Oldham and I saw um, a very nice game. I was actually at the African Cup of Nations at the time, but the game, the FA Cup game, a famous game for Oldham when we beat Liverpool. Um, and I saw a very nice assist there, left-footed cross to Matt Smith. Uh, <laughs> My scoring. guy, Matt Smith, French guy. <laughs> big, big Matt Smith. Um, how was your time in England? Did you enjoy playing in England? Did you enjoy your time at Oldham? Yeah, I, I enjoyed my time in Oldham. It was my first uh, professional contract. So I, uh, rem I will uh, remember this for, for my entire life because I started the professional football in England. So England is special for me, you know, and especially Oldham. So, so I remember the, the, the coach, Dikov, was a good guy and uh, with a good mentality. Always desire, desire, desire. You know this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it was a good time in Oldham, you know. And uh, and lucky, uh, I've been injured. That's why I left England. As you know, in England, uh, 
we have a they have a lot of players who want to play in England, and when uh, you you're not English and you you have injury you and you you out of contract, it's not simple to to find quickly a, a new club. That's why I, I left England because uh, after my injury I was ready to come back, but uh, not as a trialist. That's my my choice because some club wanted me to 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 come as a trialist, but before to 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 before to come in Oldham, I was trialist. I Leighton and Brentford maybe, and I was waiting for response. And uh, after I went to Oldham and. Uh, I accept to join the club with uh, like a low, very low contract because I just I just wanted to 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 play professional football and uh, show my qualities. That's why I signed straight in Oldham when the the, the manager say yes I want him, but we we have no like uh, we don't have so much money because I to to prove qualities. That's why what I did. But after, when uh, some agent uh, getting a, a daughter, and I didn't want to, I just wanted to sign. I want you, you know, the first feeling. I wanted to 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 stay in England and uh, have success in England. That was my so when I put one feet in England, I said I will stay here. To the end, seriously, in the football and and respect the football. Uh, I love the uh, this way. That's great. So now let's uh, let's talk a little bit about where you are currently. Is it Gangon? Yes, Gang That's correct. And it will be familiar to a lot of our South African viewers because you played in midfield alongside uh, Lebo Piri. Uh, yeah, is is uh, my guy. A very good player. And you're the amazing. captain now. He he, before his injury, he was the captain. And okay. after he didn't start the, the, the next year. So after the, 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 the manager uh, make the choice to put me on captain. What did you what did you think of, of Lebo as a player? He I always found that he was just incredibly calm. Everything that everything that Lebo does is so calm. Uh, Lebo is amazing. To play alongside him was a great very good pleasure because he's calm, he's so technique. He has some skills from his country, from Bafana, Bafana. Hey, those skills, <laughs> like uh, uh, the skills you, you do on the road, you know? <laughs> Lebo, he's crazy. That's why I love him, because he's crazy. And also on the pitch, he's able to make those skills, you know? And, uh, and, uh, and it was uh, easy to play for with him. Because all his smart and uh, he made the time yeah he's a very he's a very good player unfortunately maybe didn't get enough opportunities with Bafana Bafana which to me and Joe has always been a surprise because we know how much of a good footballer he is but something that Bafana is blessed with is a lot of midfielders um so the competition for midfielders is is very very high and unfortunately for uh, Lebo he maybe hasn't had the opportunities that he that he deserves but I hope there might still be a chance because he's still He's still young. There's still so much talent there, and I hope that he, he gets more opportunities for Bafana in the next uh, in the next campaign. Ah uh, yes, I hope to. I hope to. Ebo is my guy. This man, <laughs> when you have him on the pitch, you because like uh, Joe say, he's calm. He's so calm. So that made the the team calm too, you know. And you play your game. And the uh, Lebo can say, hey, come, come, bro, come. It's been a long time uh, until the, the end of the game. Be calm, be calm, okay? I go, you go, I go, you go. No, uh, with Lebo, it was good football. The football just, I just like. Just lastly from... Is Sorry? Going? No, it's no, okay, go on. Play the football I like. Excellent. Just, just lastly for me, I want to ask, so now with, with Comoros, you've... Been to your first AFCON, you've done well at your first AFCON, you've scored your first goals, you've had a goalkeeper in net, a, a player in goal, you've done all that kind of stuff. What's next? Like, you know, you want obviously want to qualify for the next tournament. 
what are your ambitions now for for the next Afcon? You know, you because it's every two years, you've you've still got another tournament in you. Uh, we are hungry. We are hungry to get uh, Ivory Coast. We are hungry to to get this because now all the people, all all people are for this, and around the, the world, the the people who who saw Comoros, they say, hey. We want to 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 see them at the net Afcon, you know. So it's a new pressure for us because for well, the first time we get to the Afcon, and now we we are qualified. We are qualified. We pass around. So so people want to see us again, like uh, Madagascar did before us. Now people wanted to to see them. Unfortunately, they. Uh, they have a, a tough uh, group stage and uh, was about one point, one point uh, for them to, to get the Afcon. But uh, now, for us, it's uh, to, to, to be at the Afcon uh, as a regular team. Like, you know, that's the focus because we have so, so many young players in the good, good team in France. Uh, the, like, uh, Paris, Marseille, there are a lot of who, who, if they grow up good, we make the, the good thing to be qualified uh, each uh, two years. They, they can, uh, they, they can, like, they can, um, how do you say in English? They can choose Comoros, you know? That's the focus. Because, you know, for us, the, the focus wasn't to, we wanted to play AFCON, but we wanted to build a team for the next generation. But what the, 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 the great thing we, 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 we made, with the first gener gener generation, we get of the AFCON. That's, you know, that's a, a, a real moment of history, you know, with the first generation to play for the country, we get the African Cup of Nations. So now we want to, we want to build on this and uh, bring uh, the young uh, players to come and join us and uh, make history too for the country. You see, I have no doubt you have not only inspired a nation, you've inspired the whole of Africa, Europe, the whole world, the whole football world your performances have really inspired inspired everyone uh, and it was a joy it was a joy to watch you on the big stage and uh, i hope to be watching you be bafana bafana in ivory coast uh, in the next african cup of nations thank you uh doc so you it's done with the football and bafana bafanas <laughs> i never retired i i never retired i'm always open for a call up but i think now what's nice with bafana is they've taken on a very young squad um and we they they were very close to to get into the playoffs for the world cup um but hopefully that experience now for the afcon qualifiers they have to be at afcon they can't not be at afcon that's impossible so but you know you know as we see on the tournament even in the, with the Bafanas or Ghana, you have a, a, a young talent. You have to you have experienced players because look, Ghana, they have so many talents. How? Oh. But like no, they they haven't too much experiences on the on the pitch. Boy, like. Uh, like they they have before, like they had before, you know, defenders, and uh, they had Thomas Partey on midfield, true, but uh, it wasn't enough because they have great leaders. You 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 lost leaders after you have maybe talent, but when you lost leaders, it's not uh, that simple. So don't retire, bro. Come on. I will. I'll tell you what. I'm going to give. I'm going to give them <laughs> number i'm gonna send it to you and you can call him for me <laughs> okay okay <laughs> you see you see th thanks so much for your time man um we are gonna do uh, as we do every episode we're gonna do like a quick fire questions where i'm gonna ask you a few questions and you just need to answer with 
the first person that comes to mind. Who's the the funniest player that you've you've been in a, a changing room with? Seriously, uh, I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I will say two. One is Faiz Selimani. He played with me in national team. Okay, cool. And, and the, the, who is the fastest player you've played with? Like, in terms of pure, raw speed, what's the fastest player that you've been in the side with when you were, when you were playing? Fastest player? I didn't, didn't play uh, too much with fastest player. I think it's Ben Jaloud. Ben Jaloud with me in national team. I saw him uh, run against uh, Clinton NG, Kamal Jin, uh, Kamal Jin Suleimani, I think, and uh, he's very, very quick. And, and who's who's the best player you've played against? Against Steven Gerrard. <laughs> no, no hesitation there whatsoever. No, <laughs> no question. question. And, and and just lastly, uh, who was your role model as a footballer growing up? Um, whether it's a, a footballer or another sports person, or a, you know, a, another just a general person. Who was who was your your biggest role model growing up? My role model, you say? Yeah. I I don't have so many models as like uh, out of out of football, you know. Like I said, uh, at first I'm Muslim. My my model was it's to have a good behavior and uh, to be nice with my people and people around me all the time and be focus on this and uh, on football when i was young i loved kaka you know i loved kaka 